Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warplanes and today we're going to talk a bit about specialization. Um, namely, how it works, what to do with it, and how effective is specialization really. Um, I know that uh, specialization came out in update 2.0.5. Uh, probably one of the most infamous patches um, to ever be released on World War Planes. It caused several players, including myself, to leave because it basically took the old system, flipped it over on its head, let it die out, and was like, oh, here's the next thing to come. It was completely radically different, uh, totally changed how everything worked, and quite frankly, I didn't like it. But, you know, as time has gone on, I've gotten very used to the system. Uh, I have come back to the game after about six months of quitting, and... Um, yeah, I mean, I've been back for a while. I've been back since about the summer of this year. Um, like, early summer, maybe even a little bit earlier than that. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, it caused me to leave this game for a while. And um, if... I can only imagine what new players have to deal with, because specialization, when it wasn't around, the game was more simplified, in a way. And it was more uh, early player or new player friendly because new players were easily able to grasp the system, the basics and concepts without it being overwhelming and uh, without other players that they're facing having a serious advantage over them in combat. However, despite how controversial specialization is to me there's aspects about it that I really like and there's aspects that I absolutely despise I still wanted to make this video because the only true dedicated specialization video I've made was um, well there wasn't one <laughs> it was a rambling and a rant talking about why I quit the game and why specialization is a problem. Uh, but I never really... I, I've definitely explained the system and the mechanics in that video. But it wasn't a dedicated video to specialization in a less negative way. So, this is what this video is going to be. Um, before we start though, I wanted to mention, hey, my tech trees are complete. Um... So if you saw the JU-287 video that I posted, it's been like, what, a week and a half, two weeks ago by now? Um, you, it showed that I didn't have most of the tier 10s. Well, I can proudly say that video was very old, and um, I have all the tier 10s now. Every single tier 10, and on top of that, I almost have every single plane non-premium in the game from tier 5 and higher. As you can see, there's some Germans that I was missing, but that's because I needed hangar slots back then, and I did not have enough tokens. So I sold my Tier 5s. But, I will be rebuying them soon. As you can clearly see, I even have um, most of the Tier... F and the Bomber line, I have the entire Bomber line, because that came out, and they gave me a hangar slot with each. So, there was no reason not to hang on to those. Um... And I have even almost all the non-premiums in the U.S. tech tree. So, I have plenty of tokens, as you can see. So, I probably will be going back and purchasing the German planes. Especially now that they're on discount. But I need to find time to use my premium time and my credits to do so. With that out of the way, I... I stopped making videos for a while because I was so close to having the tech trees complete. And I really, really wanted to complete them. So now that they're complete, I can focus a little bit more. There was a time when I needed to purchase 11 tier 10 planes. 
that's that's a crazy amount of credits. That's like what almost 70 million credits to buy all of them because they're about 6.1 million each. So it, it's close to 7 million credits that I needed. But um, they had the 10% or 15% discount on all tier 10s at one point, so I definitely used that to my advantage. But anyway, that's a little bit off track. Let us now begin on talking about specialization. So, what exactly is specialization? How do you know you have it? What is it? And how does it work? Well, that's a very good question. I'm very glad you asked. If we click on um, my mouse and come up right beneath the name of the plane and you click on it, something's going to pop up. Okay? Something's going to pop up that looks a bit like this. And there's four different stages that your plane can be in. The first stage is something that I'm pretty sure they don't have in the game right now. And this is the prototype stage. It looks like it was something they were thinking about when they uh, introduced these specialization mechanics. But as far as I'm aware, blueprints in the way that this is are not in the game. Um, they might probably possibly do it during uh, events or something. You could earn a prototype or a blueprint of a plane, and you could probably test it out. It sounds like, let's see, uh, immediately tested in battle, ready to be tested in battle, blah, 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 without researching it. See, because we don't really have this in the game, I have no idea whether or not this is you're getting a plane stock just to test it out, if you're getting it um, fully upgraded. I have no idea how this works because it simply is not in the game. Okay, but that does kind of look cool. It's something that they maybe they could toy around with during the Christmas event or something. I hope they didn't forget about it because it does sound like a pretty cool idea. The second stage, or really this is the more primary stage, I guess, is the stock configuration. When you purchase a plane, when you go to your tech tree, you research the plane, and you purchase the plane, you will have the plane in the stock configuration. What does this mean? Well, it means that you need to research equipment modules. So if we go to the HG3, uh, this is not a very good example. Let me pop down to a different tier real quick. If I find maybe a pirate or something. Oh, look at that, pirate. <laughs> yes, if we find the pirate, and we go to the upgrades, not the service. We are in the stock configuration. I bought the plane, but it's not specialized. When you initially get a stock configuration, this is something you guys should all be fairly familiar with, but just in case you aren't, when you buy a plane, it's in the stock configuration. You're gonna have this engine, this airframe, and these guns. Unless you somehow have researched other modules, like maybe uh, the upgraded 20s, on a different plane because these are also they also go on the heavy fighter line so if you have played the American heavy fighter line and researched these guns they will also be researched for you on this plane but on the whole you're gonna have to research your modules when you buy the plane and that simply is considered what they consider a stock configuration now it must be noted that there is something in this game called elite status and there's something called specialization. Elite status, if you have elite status, this does not necessarily mean you have specialist. If you have specialist, however, it means you do have elite status. A little complicated, yes, but elite status is simply saying I have every module that the plane could possibly research researched. This does not mean you have to have the next planes researched. So as long as you have both of these engines researched on the, the pirate, the airframe researched, and the guns researched, but not necessarily the next plane researched, you have elite status. Elite status doesn't give you much. The only thing elite status gives you is the ability to accelerate crew training. So as you can see, I have Accelerate Crew Training on my Pirate. Now in this case, I do have the next plane research, but it's not required for Elite Status. 
Okay. It must be noted that progress toward specialist cannot begin, cannot begin until you have acquired elite status. So you acquire elite status, which is why when you're doing going through your tech trees, the number one thing you should be doing is unlocking every single module. If for nothing else, you unlock elite status and you can begin progress on specialization. I hope that makes sense. Um, because progress towards specialization is long, especially on multi-rolls and bombers. Specialization can go for upwards of 200, 250 battles before you get it specialized without using tokens. It is ridiculous. It is a very, very long process. And being able to start early is a great idea. So, elite status versus specialist status. Elite status means you've unlocked all your modules. Specialist means you've gone above and beyond. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. The only benefit, again, of elite status is being able to accelerate crew training. But do note that simply means that you're taking any battle experience you earn from a battle, any base experience, including the um, pilot and crew experience that you get, all of the experience, for, except for a free experience, will go into your pilot. So any boosters from your times five daily double, or um, like there's a special mission where you can get times five, any extra experience that you earn will not be going onto your plane toward being able to unlock modules, but instead will be going toward your pilot's experience. So that's what elite status does for you. Not much. And I really do not suggest you put accelerate crew training on until you've researched your next plane, unless you really don't care for researching the next plane. Or if we go to the tech tree, and look at the USA, you can see how the pirate is kind of this weird middle dog, and you, the pirate can re research the banshee. But let's say you have the pancake already, and the pancake has 56,000 experience on it, and your pirate, you just got it fully upgraded. Well, you'd probably rather research the banshee through the pancake, right? So you might put Accelerate Crew Training on your pirate, so you can just use the experience for something beneficial rather than going toward the Banshee which you're not going to care for because your your pancake is the one that's going to be researching your Banshee for you. Um, so that that should make sense. Um, there's not really a whole lot, or if you really just don't care about the next tier, you can put Accelerate Crew Training on, but yeah, you definitely want to put Accelerate Crew Training on your pot, or your, your premium planes which is something I should mention. Premium planes, you automatically come out of the gate um, with elite status. So when you buy it, you're never in stock configuration. You're always in elite status minimum. And I think if we click on this uh, thing, we will see that, yes, after stat or stock status, which is what you, what you get when you buy the plane, you unlock elite status. And those are the benefits of it, of course. Now, we shall begin talking about specialization. Again, specialization can only begin, progress towards specialization can only ever begin once you acquire elite status. So you get a stock configuration when you buy the plane, you, get unle you unlock elite status, now you can begin progress towards specialization, which is this final one. Think of specialization as a super juiced or super souped up um, mode for your plane where you can get additional benefits and make your plane extremely powerful. If you're a tier 9 plane, you can basically create a tier 10 plane with specialization. That's just how it is. Your plane basically goes from one tier to the higher tier with specialization. Um, you might not believe me, but with my testing, if you set up your plane correctly, you at least move up one tier. It's ridiculous. It's obscene. Um, 
and it's one of the main things I didn't like about specialization is I felt it was too powerful. But, you know, for players that have completed the game, I've completed the, all the tech trees, going for specialization is something that's really fun. Um, going for something that means something, um, that actually gives serious bonuses to your planes, is just fun. It's just like good end game content. Right, it's post game content in like your normal uh, games, and um, I, I'm telling you, specialization is really powerful. And I'm going to go through that in just a moment on the benefits of specialization. But that is essentially what specialization is. Now, if we take a look at this, we can see that I have elite status unlocked, which means I have all the modules unlocked. Makes sense because I have the next plane researched probably means I have all the modules researched. But now I can begin progress towards specialization. And in order to unlock specialization, you can do it in one of two ways. The first way, just ignore it. Don't do it. Don't grind. Just spend some tokens. <clears throat> Granted, this is a lot of tokens. So I don't necessarily re recommend doing that unless you just have a lot of tokens lying around. Um... But even then, saving it for hangar slots or events where you have those missions and you can complete them with tokens, I feel like that's a little bit better use of tokens. But anyway, the second way to unlock specialist configuration is by doing these two missions listed here. For fighters, it is based on enemy aircraft destroyed and air defense aircraft destroyed. So if we take a look, I need to comp I need to destroy 270 aircraft, enemy aircraft, they cannot be air defense. And I need to destroy 55 air defense aircraft. I will say that specialization is probably the easiest on fighters. Uh, heavy fighters usually are not that bad either. Um, and ground pounders, higher tier ground pounders are better than lower tier but whatever. It, ground punters are kind of in between. Bombers and multi-rolls are probably the worst. They take a very, very long time to do. Um, but yeah, you can unlock specialization by doing that. And in the process, you know, you got to think about it this way. The time that it takes you to do specialization with your tier 9 and 10 planes is probably a minimum of 50 to 100 battles, I'd say. It at least it probably 50 to 100 battles minimum for your high tier planes and at that point if you've played a plane for 50 or 100 battles maybe you should have the opportunity to make your plane that much more fun you know just make that that special plane that you've played for that many battles just that little bit better by a little bit I mean a lot bit but whatever so that's what specialization is. It must be noted, or it should be noted, that if you complete half of the primary task, you receive a 44 token discount. If you complete the secondary task, which in this case is the air defense aircraft destroyed, you can get an 11 token discount. So this was something that was not introduced at when Specialist was first in the game. But it's something that I said was a serious problem, and they implemented it. Basically, the more progress you do toward the mission, the fewer tokens you have to spend. Think about it that way, but it's not proportional to the amount that you have left. So if you are 10% uh, of the way toward Specialization, that does not mean you only have to um, spend 90% of your token, the or printed token cost. You don't get a 10% discount on your token cost. Um, so progress does not necessarily equate to percentage of discount toward completing it. You have to complete either half the primary task or the entire secondary task in order to get a, a discount. Now, we understand what specialization is. We've unlocked all the modules, we've completed the missions or spent tokens. It must also be noted before we move on that once 
specialization becomes an option or uh, once you've completed these missions or spent the tokens to do it you must then spend another 950,000 tokens to unlock specialization. Just keep that in mind that a tier 9 plane costs about 3.6 million credits so you are effectively spending about a quarter of that just to specialize it. It's very, very pricey, and that's just to unlock the ability to put your plane in specialist. But now we have a specialist plane, right? Now we have a specialist plane. What exactly does that mean for us? Well, let me go back to the plane that we started the video off on, my HG3, right? Specialization unlocks uh, a couple things for you. Let me first go over to the, to the FW252. This plane is elite status. I don't have any more modules to research, but I have not completed the missions yet for specialization. So if we go to the service department here, we're going to see that there are certain consumable slots and there are certain equipment slots that are locked off to us. We cannot access those until we are in the specialist configuration. So, the immediate benefit of specialization is that you gain an additional consumable slot. Uh, as you can see, each of these planes gets different amounts of consumable and equipment slots. So in this case, I get two engine consumable slots and two engine consumable slots that is unique to this plane. If I go to maybe my SU-10 and we take a look at that, I get, okay, still two engine slots, but I get a turret slot and an outboard weapon slot as well. <laughs> so each plane gets different amounts of consumables so you can put in each and different types of equipment slots, okay? Um, which means that when Wargaming said that specialization gives you more options to customize your plane, they are right, but they are very much wrong too. Because the way that this system is set up, I can never, ever, ever, ever put a, a control surface trim. So if my tail gets knocked out, I cannot do anything about it. Literally cannot do anything about it. I will have to have that damaged tail and I can't do anything about it. There is nothing I can do. And the previous, if we compare that to the previous system, you could put any consumable that they had on offer in any consumable slot. But you only got three consumable slots. We get five consumable slots now. But that also must be noted that uh, universal ammunition was not a consumable before. It is a consumable now. So if we consider that, you could do four consumable slots. Now we can do five. But that's F tier 10. Lower tiers, you can still only do four. And low tiers, which is tier 1 to tier 4, you can only do three consumable slots. <clears throat> so... Yes, we do have more customization options, but we don't because we can never put um, a control trim on if we wanted to. We are limited by what slots Wargaming deems important to the plane. The SU-10 actually does have forward firing guns. I think it's got like one or two forward firing guns, but it does not get the ability to put universal ammunition on it or make them more accurate <clears throat> so as you can see I can't put anything forward firing guns even if I wanted to um, I just wanted to mention that so yes we gain more con uh, customization options but only at higher tier lower tier it's basically the same and we gain more well that's about it we don't really right we're limited but before, equipment slots, in, 
it's the same thing as if you play World of Tanks, right? World of Tanks, you, you have three equipment slots, you click on an equipment, and it gives you a list of all possible equipment. You can choose whichever one goes you want, and it will just give you a bonus. It'll be like, oh, you want 10% accuracy bonus? Yeah, click on this uh, enhanced gun sight or whatever it's called. You put it on your your tank, and you are just you just have a bonus. This is not the case in World of Warplanes. Equipment is far more dynamic, for better or for worse. <laughs> and because it's dynamic, you can have the potential to make your equipment way, way better than it ever could have possibly been before this system. And does that mean that there's more customization options? Hmm. I don't know. You're just making it better, right? But here's the interesting part. <laughs> Equipment slots do not just give a straight-up bonus anymore. If we take a look at this, I have a 10.5% 10 10 maneuverability at high speed uh, bonus on this plane, right? Uh, but it comes with a cost, and that cost is my pilot is less resilient to being killed. Um, so 7.5% more likely for my pilot to get injured than it was before. But I also have a couple bonus characteristics, and those ones are really, really good. I have a 5% accuracy when firing at moving targets, a 3% maneuverability at high speed, and a 1% maneuverability in turns. So, yeah, um, basically, this plane, or that equipment module, has bonuses. Um, how do I want to do this? Um, okay. So, equipment modules have bonuses and they have drawbacks. You must keep that in mind. And you're noticing that all these have a color associated with them, correct? So, these ones are all orange or brown. They look more brown to me, but orange, I guess, whatever. And, um, that means that I have upgraded my equipment modules. What exactly does that mean? Well, allow me to demonstrate what I mean by jumping down to a lower tier because then, I'll, then it'll actually mean something to me. So I was going around specializing in my tier 2 premiums last, or yesterday and uh, I don't like flying tier 2's when they're not good planes, but um... Let's do the Pegasus, because why not? So, you got specialization, and you can do these equipment modules, right? <clears throat> so I click on the equipment module, and it gives me a list of options, correct? <clears throat> In this case, I can do a reinforced skin, a lightweight, weave, a lightweight wing frame, or polished skin. Well, in this case, the Pegasus is slow as a brick, so I really don't care about that. Plus, it in affects maneuverability a little bit more. This plane is about the least maneuverable plane you could possibly hope to find, so I don't really care about that either. I don't really want to be dogfighting anyone anyway. So I guess the reinforced skin is the only thing that logically makes sense to me. <laughs> so... I'm going to put a stock reinforced skin on this for demonstration purposes. Yes, I know I had a couple better ones in the depot. But for demonstration purposes, this is what we're going to do. So stock, you get it stock, you pay like a certain amount of credits to buy it. I don't think it's that expensive at low tiers, which it shouldn't be. And um, you get a small bonus couple bonuses but it comes at a cost of your speed and um, well there's a few things we can do with our equ equipment the first thing we can do is make it better um, just flat out better and by doing that we're gonna right click and click on enhance enhancing you there's four different stages to enhancing we have stock we have improved 
we have advanced, and then we have ultimate. The color, um, the color identifiers for each goes gray, green, purple, brown. That's the color um, code, I guess. And when we enhance it, we can see that it literally just moves it up by 100. So this is just a base 100. It's going to move it up by 100 points. It also must be noted that while the bonuses do get better, your negatives get worse. Um, so do keep that in mind. You are paying for that increase. And I say that loosely because these negatives really don't do much. They're just kind of whatever. Um, but you do get a worse negative. I, I want to point that out. <laughs> right? And as we can see, it's going to cost me 10,000 credits and 12 air, air uh, frame elements, which I have like 5,000, so whoop de doo um, But yeah, it will just flat out make it better. Also, when you enhance your equipment, you get a bonus characteristic. And if we take a look at that and mouse over it, when I upgrade the module, I have a 50-50 chance, basically, of getting a 5% tail resistance to critical damage or a 5% tolerance to damage from AA guns. Both are beneficial, especially since I don't have the ability to fix my tail if I ever needed to because I don't have a consumable slot for my airframe, as you can see in the left-hand side. So, either of these is okay. But I think I'd rather have a better tolerance to AA fire when I'm doing this. So let's enhance it and see what happens. Just note the bonus, the benefits go up. The negatives also get worse. You're increasing your basically calib your um, level, your max range, and you're gaining additional characteristics. You're also paying the cost right here. Uh, if we look on the left hand side, it gives you a list of all available resources towards specialization that you could possibly use. Your credits, your tokens, and your materials. Uh, I forgot to mention materials. Uh, materials are a thing they added at that update too. Um, basically if you win a battle, depending on how well you did, you gain materials. That's the only way to gain materials. You cannot buy materials except for like special events or something. Um, but that is the only way to buy materials, or that is the only way to obtain materials, is generally uh, through a victorious battle, you will gain materials. Um, so yeah, we use the materials that we gain in victorious battles and pay the price. We're going to enhance it. Let's see what we get. 5% tails resistance to critical damage. Not what we wanted, but okay. You can show, it shows us that we can calibrate it. Ignore that for now. Um, my recommendation is to not calibrate the equipment until the very end. By very end, I mean once it's ultimate. I, Because I really don't know how it works otherwise. Um, I know how most of the system works, but I don't know how it works if you calibrate and then enhance. I don't know if the calibration carries over. My guess is it does not but don't quote me on that because I really have never done that because I don't want to waste materials like that. I lied. It's airframe elements. I could care less. So we're going to test it out. Let's calibrate it. So generally, I, I just want this to be very, very, very clear. I do not recommend doing this. Um, I'm doing it for experimentation's sake and so that I can have a more fulfilled or more complete... Uh, tutorial on specialization. So as you can see, we have the ability to make our stats from 200 to 258. And um, this is going to be a lottery system. I don't know if you guys care about having a lottery in your World of Warplanes, but this is a lottery. And um, yeah, we're going to play the game and see how things work. Our technological level right now is 200. The max we can make it is 258, unless we enhance it again. Um, as you can see, we have the ability to 
make our bonuses go from 11% to 21%. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty substantial, actually. Um, I would not be doing this as if, if this was using mechanical parts, but we're just using airframe elements, and I have a million bajillion airframe elements. So, you'll notice that most of these upgrades require mechanical parts. Um, so although this is the airframe elements is supposed to be just as common as the mechanical parts, you're going to be, the mechanical parts are far more valuable. But anyway, let's do some calibration. When I click it, this bar is going to go left, it's going to go right, it's going to go all up and down, and it's going to settle on either going left or going right. Um, so yeah, let's just see what happens, because our goal is to move this little dial all the way over to the 258. That's our goal right now. So let's spin to win. Okay, that was a pretty useless roll, but at least it's positive. So, we got a positive roll. As we can see, our negatives do get worse, uh, which is a little bit strange, because it should be telling me what the maximum worse is when I mouse over it, but whatever. Um, but we can see that our uh, positives have gone up by 2%. If you click calibrate, it will not apply the changes. You must click apply. So we're going to apply the changes. And we're going to calibrate again. <laughs> ah, that was a pretty good roll. But as you can see, 2% again, minus 0 0.02, or 0.2% subtracted, or worse. And we're going to calibrate again. We're going to play this lottery until we get it up to 258. For experimentation's sake. So now this is a bad roll, right? I, Wargaming is like, oh, there's no such thing as a bad roll. All rolls are good. No, they're not. You're you're going backwards. Um, so our, our negatives do get a little bit better. But we've lost the bonuses that we've been going for in the first place. So we don't like that. Don't click apply. We're just going to calibrate it instead. And that will not apply the changes. Another bad roll. Again, not a very big bad, but it's a bad roll. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big bad roll. <clears throat> and we're just going to play this game until we get that dial over. Such exciting gameplay, right? This is exactly what I wanted in my World of Warplanes. Oh, this is so much fun. Holy crap, that's actually a really good roll. <laughs> Dang it, why'd you do that? You're not supposed to give me good rolls when I'm doing this. But yeah, that's, that's a very good roll. Um, those are not common. <laughs> those rolls are not common. Don't expect that. Um, you can have some very bad luck. Oh, I've had some horrible luck when doing this. <clears throat> but we're just going to keep doing this until we get the dial over to the right. And um, this can get very expensive at low tiers, 2,500 credits and two airframe elements per whoop de skip de dip de doo It doesn't matter. <clears throat> but at high tiers, when you're doing um, a lot of different materials to enhance it or calibrate it, and you're spending like 30,000, 40,000, 60,000 credits to, uh, per calibration, it gets very, very pricey. And then you take into consideration if you get bad luck and you're spending more and you're doing that for five different equipment modules rather, rather than three, it's pretty pricey. Um, uh, calibration is the one thing that, whew, I mean, it's it definitely makes your equipment far better, but boy, is it expensive. And, you know, at this tier, I don't care, but... Um, other tiers, I would very much care. Um, which is another reason why I went down to tier 2. <laughs> Makes it better for demonstration purposes. We're going to spin it again. We're almost there. We're making it 2% at a time. <clears throat> um, but yeah, this is... I, didn't, I always recommended not doing calibration at first, but when you look at, you can go from 11% up to 21%. It, 
that, that's that's very substantial and so um, at this point I've been doing it a lot more frequently so hey we made it up hallelujah <clears throat> so we're fully calibrated excellent um, so yeah we have a 21% uh, bonus to each and a 2% negative on each but let's enhance it let's see what we can do and quite frankly I'm not sure <clears throat> okay yeah 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 it looks like if I had not calibrated it it would have brought me up to the base of 300 okay um, but because I fully calibrated it it moves me up to 328 Eight out of a potential of 368 but I, I do want to notice this uh, I do want to take it uh, mention look at what's going on the bonuses are not getting better right so by enhancing it all I've done is increased the maximum efficiency that I could have if I calibrate the equipment, right? Um, but the equipment itself hasn't gone any better. Um, there's no bonuses. Now, if I had not calibrated it, it would go up, um, which is why I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend don't enhance your or don't don't calibrate your equipment until the very end. And this is the reason why, because now. Calibration's done nothing. I've gone all the way up. I've fully calibrated it, but it's not going to be fully calibrated, right? It's it's not fully calibrated. I'm going to have to calibrate it some more. That gets expensive. Don't do that. <laughs> Just enhance it to ultimate and then calibrate it. So anyway, let's enhance it. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, that's right. Nothing happened. But we did get a new bonus, right? We got 5% to aircraft hit points. Okay, whatever. And let's enhance it one more time. Actually, before we do that, let's just look at calibration. Let's just see what happens. So that essentially put us less than half. But we can see that our maximum can now go up to 29%. If we had not calibrated it, it would have been at 17%. Um, just calibrate at the end. Just just calibrate at the end, okay? Um, no, this time it does go up a little bit. And if we look at the additional characteristics, uh, tolerance from AA fire really is what we want. We're going to roll it. Roll it. And that's definitely not what we wanted. So, we fully upgraded our equipment, right? It is now ultimate. We cannot go any higher. And look at that. Look at that calibration that we did when it was improved. It's meaningless. It's done absolutely nothing for us. Um, just, just don't calibrate until the end. Uh, now would be a good time to calibrate. But here's another thing to note. We're spending 6,100 token or credits and four airframe elements when we were enhancing before it was cheaper but it's not worth it right because we could have gotten this far in one roll we could have gotten further than that in one roll at this we had to spend multiple multiple rolls um, when it was only improved so don't calibrate until the end and I remember watching Slay's video back when he first did it and he came to that same conclusion. He's like, don't don't calibrate until the very end. And now that I've done the experimenting, now I see why. We only want to calibrate at the very end. Right? So anyway, if we take a look at this, we have we can go from twenty three percent up to thirty seven percent. Uh so I know that in the past I've said don't calibrate, it's not worth it. I, I stand corrected. That's um that's a substantial increase. You are essentially getting one and a half more enhancements out of this when you calibrate your equipment. Um that is 
very substantial. So you, if you want the most out of your equipment, that's only if you care about the most benefit, you're going to want to put on your equipment, enhance it up to ultimate, and then fully calibrate it. We've already done a calibration. I'm not going to do it again. Um, I just don't want to do that again. I'll, I might do that later, but you already saw how calibration works. It's the same process as before. It just has a higher max benefit. Right? But there is one thing I do want to show you, and that is this reassembly. And the reassembly is great because, as you can see, each time we were enhancing it, we had gained one bonus characteristic. Well, if we mouse over it, here is all the different possible bonus characteristics we could have earned uh, when we calibrate or when we enhanced it, right? And each time you do enhancing, you should be taking note, or or when you finish your uh, equipment, you should be taking a look at this screen because this screen will show you, hey, these are different bonus characteristics. So if we look through this, find the three bonus characteristics that really, really would help the plane that you're specializing. And in this case, I really like the tolerance to damage from AA, AA guns. There's two of those, so I definitely want to get those. Um, and then there's wings, wings resistance to critical damage, or there's tail resistance to critical damage. Aircraft hit points. I don't have hit points to begin with, so I really don't care for that. Um, max speed with boost activated 1%. I'm so slow. That's not going to help me. So I think the three that I'm going to care about, and honestly, if my wings get crit, whatever. I think I'd rather have the tails resistance to critical damage. But the other two that I want is the 5% tolerance to damage from AA guns and 10% tolerance to damage from AA guns. Now look at where those are. Those are at the bottom, right? So I guess we could have possibly gotten them uh, automatically, right? The first time we enhanced it, we would have only had the option between the bot or the top two, the tails resistance and tolerance to AA fire. Um, but then when we enhanced it again, we gained two more options and then when we enhanced it again we gained two more options I don't care about the top ones um, I'd rather just have the tails resistance but it should be noted the two bonuses at the very bottom the 1% max speed with boost active and 5% wings resistance to critical damage if you wanted both of those you can get both of those um, you cannot get it through normal enhancing but by reassembling, all the bonus characteristics get thrown into a hat, shuffled around, and randomly drawn. So, that means you have the ability to gain both bonus characteristics from the top tier. Um, so do keep that in mind. It, if you want the two bonus characteristics at the very top, you can do that. You just have to do it through reassembly, right? So, as we can see, I want the, the top three. There is the AA fire resistance and the tails resistance. And if we look at the bonus characteristics I have right now, the only one of those that I have is the tails resistance to critical damage. So I'm going to lock that. And just by locking it, you click on it. And that costs tokens, but it doesn't cost any more credits. So in order to lock that one, it's going to cost me two tokens, plus the original price of reassembly. I could lock another and it would increase it by another two, but we don't want the aircraft hit points, we just want that. And we're going to reassemble. <laughs> Wings resistance to critical damage, we don't want that. But we got the 10% resistance to AA guns. And yes, we do want to keep that. So yes, we're going to apply the changes, and then we're going to lock that one. And we're going to roll this one until we get what we want. Nope reassemble nope reassemble <clears throat> nope reassemble there we go wow that just cost me 500,000 credits right so it's expensive and um, 
just realize that, yes, to make your equipment as effective as you possibly can, you are spending a lot of credits. Uh, let's, let's just see here real quick. I'm going to apply the changes. We're going to service it. And if I go to the tech tree and I look at how much a tier 2 costs, 1,750 credits. I spent maybe 500,000 credits on specialization. Just on that one piece of equipment, mind you. So, unless you are a diehard seal clubbing crazy man, um, yeah, maybe you don't want to do that at low tiers. Um, but for all of you scumbags that love to fly the XP-31 religiously, yeah, this could be pretty powerful for you. I mean, I put it on too, but... Oh, I did calibrate it. Ooh, that's pretty dirty. <laughs> Honestly, I had no idea I even did this. Um, <clears throat> I don't fly the XP-31 that often. Um, I just don't fly Tier 2 that often unless I have daily doubles. But that is what happens when we do that. And you know what? While I have the XP-31 active, let's just see what we could possibly do with this. So we have a 21% increase to accuracy, 17% more likely that our pilot's going to die, but whatever. We have some really nice bonus characteristics. And you can just, I'm just going to mouse over these so you can kind of see what the potentials are from these modules, right? They're, they're substantial. They are very, very substantial. So, that is almost it for consumables it's pretty straightforward equipment you enhance it you calibrate it you reassemble it right um that is really about it um that is specialization in a nutshell um if you really want to see what specialization can do to a plane Let's go back to our HG3. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> I have this thing stacked because of the Heavy Fighter event. Um, I don't know about you guys, but oh, this last weekend, holy crap. Holy crap. There was so much server lag couldn't do anything and it makes me so mad because I was like 300 capture points away from uh, getting in the top five and that's it because um, well <clears throat> the server was acting up and I played for quite a while on Friday and quite a while on Saturday but Sunday the servers were basically completely down Saturday night they were down basically as well and um, I'm just really mad about that. I, I'm really, really mad about that. Because it cost me a tier 7 premium. And that's like $40 that it cost me. I'm, I'm, I'm just so mad about that. Um, I should have been in the top 5. i have been in the top 5 for all the other events. And to be like 300 points away. Ugh, it's so annoying. So annoying. Whatever. Life goes on, right? But yeah, I put my uh, Dornier 335 pilot in here. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good pilot. Um, but I went for a full turn build on my HG3 uh, with Resilience and Marksman 1 and 2. Um, I was experimenting here because if you guys know me, I almost always put firing accuracy. And you can even see that I have that in the depot. I took it off during the event because I wanted to test out the G-Suit. And let me tell you, holy crap, the G-Suit is powerful on this plane. It, it's so good. Um, yeah, I can feel that the accuracy is not the same. It, it is a very drastic hit on accuracy, but like, whew, you're so maneuverable. And I like that. I gotta calibrate it. Um, but I put, I pulled off my special projects and nations for the event and put them on this plane. Oh boy. Uh yeah, it's 
It's powerful. <laughs> it's so powerful. Um, but special projects cost twice as much to do anything. To calibrate, to enhance, they're twice as expensive as normal. So, oh, but you only have one of them per period for each. So, once I get them to, once I get them to ultimate and fully calibrated, well, then I can just move them around to planes as I see fit. And especially now that I don't need to unlock or buy any more tier tens, all my credits are going towards just moving my equipment around and having fun with it, moving my pilots around and um, going for specialization. And I think that's the appeal of it right now to me. Um, but I'm not gonna actually fly this battle. Uh, if I get a good battle with the HG3 sometime in the future, I may post it. But um, I think I'm gonna redo how this channel is set up a little bit. Um, that's basically the bulk of specialization, by the way. Uh, there's really not much more specialization. So if you don't care about that, you're free to click off this video. But before you do, please leave a comment down below. I've been having a lot of community support lately. And uh, that State of World of Warplanes video I posted a while back has almost 6,000 views. Um, so thank you guys for that. I really appreciate that. And, you know, that State of World of Warplanes video that I did... It showed me that there are still people that play this game. Or, at the very least, there's at least enough people that are still thinking about this game. And they're looking at it, and they're like, Hey, I was I was a beta tester in World of Warplanes. I remember what World of Warplanes used to be like. What is it like now? And I've, I've gotten a lot of War Thunder players. Um, they all moved out to World War Thunder once World of Warplanes died. But they... They came back and they looked at my video and they were like, how is World of Warplanes doing? Is it time to come back? And to that I say, I don't know. Because uh, <laughs> since 2.0, there have been countless amounts of bugs and glitches. Just go through my channel. I have quite a few of those bugs posted. Uh, at least a video talking about it. And it's bad like there was some really really bad stuff I haven't really gotten that much anymore there are still bugs and there are still problems I there's still things that I don't like about it but this game at least plays the way it's supposed to play most of the time um, and this weekend was a big exception to that the servers went complete kaput and um, yeah I'm just I'm still very salty about that because I, I was like 300 capture points away from top 5. That's like one aircraft kill. Oh, so annoying. It's like two aircraft kills. One or two aircraft kills. Um, but yeah. I, I think this game has its problems still. and uh, We haven't had an update since I think July. I think somewhere around that, June or July was the last update that we had. And it wasn't even a very big update. It was just to add European plans, basically, and do the re European tech tree rebalance. There was no new maps, no new planes other than that. I, I really don't think this game has much more life in it. it it's The development team is going downhill. The player base seems to be going... Well, you know, the player base... I've actually had more players in my battles recently than I thought I did. Um, but yeah, I don't want to turn this back into another State of World of Warplanes video. But yeah, I just wanted to say thank you guys for that uh, State of World of Warplanes um, interaction. I had almost like a hundred comments on that video. I, I'm flabbergasted. That is, that is a lot of communication between you guys. And uh, thank you. Thank you a lot. I hope this specialization video was helpful. If it was, please leave a like and uh, comment down below what you guys think about specialization. Is it still something that bothers you? Or how would you go about fixing it? Or does it not need to be fixed? I guess that's a better question. Does specialization not need to be changed? Have you gotten used to it? To me, I've kind of gotten used to it. But... 
I actually made this video because of uh, someone on the forums. They they had messaged me and they're like, "Hey, could you make a video on specialization?" Because it was really confusing to them. And um, here's the video, by the way. If you if you're that person, here is the video. Uh, and here's my thoughts on specialization. It's 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 something else. Um, but yeah, that's the reason why I made this video. And you know, Postal Monkey and VBat, they are doing a really really good job with posting consistent gameplay um, and battle replays and stuff like that. They're not really doing reviews on planes, but they're kind of reviewing the plane as they show the battles. And because of that, I think I'm going to restructure the channel a little bit. Um, it seems to me that you guys care more about videos like the state of World of Warplanes. Or I even had, I've had a lot of people coming back to my um, Ultimate Guide uh, uh, series for the ground targets. And there was a couple other things, I don't remember what they were. Um, but I had a couple ultimate guides on this. I'm probably going to make this an ultimate guide of specialization as well. Um, but I think you guys care more about that. that that's kind of my niche in the World of Warplanes community. Is the, the videos explaining mechanics of the game. And um, I, I'm probably going to start sticking to that. Um, try to... Uh, ease people into heavy fighter gameplay, bomber gameplay, um, and do ultimate guides of that sort of thing. Um, I think that's where I belong in this community, because I can't post videos very often because of reasons. Um, I think that's probably my niche in this community. Uh, if you guys liked this video though, please leave a comment. Please leave a comment. Please leave a comment. I just like to see what you guys think of it. And, um, yeah. I, I gotta stop rambling here. I really do. Thank you guys so much for watching. It really means a lot. But please leave a comment. Please leave a comment. And I will catch you guys all in the next one.